Hey folks, welcome back. Oh, we got the another one of these Jurassic Park trucks back in here. Actually, this one's been in here before. Um, more towards the end of the video, if you want, I'll, uh, well, I'll just go ahead and do it, but I'll explain to you like what this truck's job is and stuff. You know, imagine if you're, you're seeing it, you're probably a little bit, uh, curious as to what it might, uh, do. But anyways, that's not the topic of the video. So we'll do that later. Um, this thing has got a couple of codes in it right here. Sorry about the light glare. So we got camshaft, uh, camshaft position sensor B. We got an intermittent uh, problem like circuit problem and all that kind of stuff. I have actually gone through, I didn't have time to film any of it, did all the checks, uh, made sure we had the voltage and then we were reading the an erratic uh, signal coming out of the back sensor on the oscilloscope and everything. I just did not have time to film any of that. This is mostly just about um, replacing the you know the cam position sensor there's two of them one on each side and uh, they're on the back of the head i kind of show you a printout picture what we're looking at here on the back side of the uh engine uh so here's here's right here's where um assuming that this is bank one i can't remember i will confirm that for sure but uh you got a crank position sensor right here and then you got your uh, another cam position sensor, another cam position sensor there. This is uh, what they look like. Not too bad, you know. There's a Ford part number right there. And anyways, so yeah, we're getting an erratic reading off the one side, and um, causing some. We also had a couple of other faults. This is what was in here. Uh, before when I first got this thing um, <clears throat> before I cleared to you know did a bunch of testing and all that stuff we did have you know a misfire detected in cylinder number five that has actually not come back um, I get these faults p consistently coming back but the misfire is not always not always there um, so it just depends on you know how erratic the reading is and all that kind of stuff I'm sure that it gets worse. I mean, they told me that check engine lights blinking and all that kind of stuff. So I imagine it's a, you know, pretty significant misfire, um, when it's not reading that, uh, cam position, uh, sensor very good. So anyways, um, we'll get started with this. All right. So we got this thing off of here. There's a couple things, uh, hoses attached to it. Um, then you got a, uh, hose clamp here. Hose clamp back here, a couple of wire loom things were attached over here, and then it just it just lifts off. It's got these little uh, deals like that that go right in those rubber things, so it kind of just snaps in place there. Um, so, anyways, the uh, camshaft position sensor, like we showed in that that picture diagram, you know, it's clear back there, and this is bank one. So basically, we've got uh, cylinders one, two, three, four five, six, seven, eight, which is way different than what Ford used to do. I mean, the Ford used to start them up, uh, at least cylinder number one over here. And I think they went odds and evens. I can't remember for sure, but uh, they're different. Anyways, this is bank one. So this is the side we're dealing with. Um, here's the uh, connector. I went ahead and removed it, but now the inner pieces have broken out of here. So I'm about to get a new connector. They won't snap in place anymore, but you just have to snake your hand down like this and I'm not really gonna be able to my fingers are right on the end of the sensor and I could see the top of the bolt it feels like a 5 16 head but that's probably what we'll go in there first with um, I don't know if the camera's gonna be able to focus on that anyways I'm gonna try to get a shot of it I cannot see what's going on even. Yeah, I apologize. I cannot see where it is or anything. There it is. 
I'll pull the camera out just so you can kind of get the reference, but it's right back in there. So I'll have to get us a little 5 sixteenths, uh, um, probably just a deep walled socket and a little little ratchet, and we'll get reach down in there and just go all by feel and get it and uh, pull it out. Okay, so there's the bolt. Um, when I say 5 sixteenths, uh, it's an eight millimeter, but five sixteenths is so close. That just happened to be what I was using. Now I'm gonna reach in here and grab a hold of the sensor and just kind of work it back and forth. It's got that O-ring, so it could be a little difficult to get out. You don't want to be prying on it or do anything like that to break the end of it off. Got it pulled out of there. You know, I was able to, it's in there just like this, and I was able to spin it here like this really easy. I just kind of wiggled it. Got this over here. I can get my finger underneath of the this tab right here where the bolt goes through and just kind of work it, work it up there. Now getting the new one on. Put something on here like some Vaseline or something like that. Lubricate this O-ring and stick it back down in there. And then stick your bolt back in. Um, anyways, that's not too bad at all. Just to stick that down inside of there. Um, I kind of got it in there and then I just kind of pushed down on it. And I heard kind of a snap, which was that O-ring, you know, snapping in place there. Um, you know, you want to do that on those kind of sensors. You want to do that best you can. And not draw them down uh, with the bolt because that'll usually kind of sometimes offset them and I've broken them before broke the little tabs off the off the side there so you don't want to really you know do that if you don't have to but anyways you know get the bolt started all by hand um, and then I just use this little guy here but I mean you can use you know a lot of different things you can even get a, a electric one or something go up here and get an extension and go clear down there and stuff like that it's just because you can't see it um, doesn't mean it's not hard to get to i don't know uh, maybe we would go over here and try to show the one on the bank one side there it is right there so yeah it's not me being right-handed that one would be easier for me to do um, so anyways I got to get a new connector for this side because that thing will not snap in place that's not going to work that wasn't our problem before the connector broke as I was I was just pulling it a little little thumb piece you push press in there um, just basically came out so it's just you know it's a little bit old and brittle and just needs to be replaced so I got to get a new one of those um, but that's just a matter of just you know wiring in uh, new connector and all that kind of stuff I'm not gonna film any of that kind of stuff so anyways um, this is just showing about how to replace these cam sensors and all that stuff now the crank position sensor that's down there I uh, do not know if you can get to that maybe I'll try to reach down there with my my hand or something like that and see if I could feel it or something um, but I'm not damn sure not gonna be able to film it um, but you've seen that picture diagram where that was at if you're having any issues with that but yeah let me let me re reach down there and see if I could I could feel it um well yeah I reached down in there and I was able to put my finger right on the the uh, head of the bolt it feels like a eight millimeter also I was able to get my fingers right on the uh, connector didn't try to unplug it or nothing like that but um, the only thing I'm not 100% sure of is how long that sensor is since I've never replaced one if it's really super long then you might not have the clearance uh, beyond the intake manifold you know to get it to completely come out of there um, but if I had to replace that you know if I was having issues with that sensor or something like that on one of these engines I would attempt to do it before um, you know but uh, obviously if, if that's not the case, then, you know, these intake manifolds are, are not too bad to, um, come off. I've had these off before because on this particular, uh, pickup, this one broke a exhaust valve spring and dropped a valve. And then the piston came up and hit and bent the valve. So we removed the cylinder head, replaced that valve and spring rocker arm, all that stuff. And then, um, 
all new timing and and intake manifold gaskets and all that stuff put this thing back together i don't know that was probably maybe not quite a year ago maybe a year ago or something i can't remember for sure but um anyways i know so i know that these intake manifolds basically everything comes off you know really really easy um you do for the clearance got to have the alternator off and its lower bracket and then you also need to remove uh this uh, thermostat housing and you know drain your coolant down just a little bit and remove move that over and because the thing is so deep that uh you don't have the clearance you know and i usually just leave this this on um remove the coils for the spark plugs and um leave the fuel rails on there's a fuel line connector back there somewhere i think that's all oh, this is it actually right here there's no return line just that and then uh yeah so anyways um yeah so people are probably curious about what this uh what this pickup does um dairy cows need to have their feet uh trimmed and everything um i don't know how a couple times a year so i really don't know um but anyways, what this does is, is this is a chute and it rotates down Then the cow can walk in there and then it's got straps, you know, and everything like that. And it, and it, it, it tilts them over on their sides so that you can work on their feet and uh, they get used to it and everything goes really smoothly. They can do quite a few of them. Uh, dang, you're probably a hundred of them a day, I would say in uh that's you know and where you have to set these up um sometimes they got to use the pickup as a you know kind of a run-in deal like so that's why it's got all the paneling and stuff like that to uh guard it and whatnot um but anyways that's 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 what it does and it's not just dairy cows sometimes uh 4-h steers and bulls and um rodeo stock and things like that you know take care of their feet and uh yeah that's what it does but like i said it looks like something off of jurassic park or something like that hence that's what we call it the jurassic park truck but um anyways hopefully this video helped you out some about uh replacing those uh cam position sensors either one or both or all of them if you need to um so anyways uh thanks for watching